Caution. 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 It's oh. working this time. It doesn't Caution. work? It's on. No, it's working. Caution. It doesn't work? What? No, I'm just fucking up. Oh, my goodness. No, now we're all fucked up. I got to do everything all over. Come on. Right, tell us, Caution. It's working this time. It's so here. It's so on. I need everybody to do me a big favor because we don't know what just happened. If you're watching the podcast today, please share this feed right now. Don't do nothing else. If you if you're tuning in right now, wherever you're at, please share this feed because if we share it anymore, we're gonna look. Lex is tired. If we share it anymore, we're gonna get you know I don't know something something's gonna happen. The SWAT team's gonna show up. Yeah. The social media SWAT team. The social media. If we share it anymore. Kevin says it's working, so Yay. thank you. Thank you, Kev. Um, I appreciate it. Um, you guys are never guests, uh, but we do this for a living. Not just this, but this is part of it. Acquisitionally, we have podcasts, reels, royalties, live streams, of course, streaming music. Um, we do shows. We have a website with merchandise. Acquisitionally, we have podcasts. This is what we do. Um, this is the Honeycomb Hideout Podcast. I almost forgot what the name of it was. Because <laughs> we weren't well, here. Well, you still kind of like said it right, though. This is what we do. Yeah, we weren't here last week. It's gone already? Yes, and of course, this podcast, <laughs> it's supposed to happen at 7 p.m. every hump day. Wednesday let me. Mm-hmm. And today is Wednesday, Wednesday Let Us. Do you know how many people were mad that we didn't do the podcast uh, I... um, every Wednesday because we have to go pay the rent and stuff, you know? We have other responsibilities. We don't get paid a lot for being musicians. We don't get paid a lot or anything really for being podcasts. So that little bit um, that Brandon... That little example um, of y'all donating those stars to us in bits, depending on where you're watching from, um, and sometimes people just cash app us or Venmo us um, when they can. This isn't a requirement. This isn't something we're asking people to do. But if you if you love this podcast and you love the band and you want to see us grow, if you want to see us um, advanced. Thank you, Gio. If you want to help us see play venues um, closer to you, if you want to help us travel, if you want our videos and our music to look and sound a little bit better, if you want this podcast to be successful, and most importantly, if you want sepsis to be seen and heard by many more people, the best way to do that is please, if you're tuning in now, share this feed. It costs you nothing. And for those of you who are absolutely interested in making sure that this thing works out well, you can do what Brandon did. And um, every little bit helps. You guys might think, oh man, a dollar is not going to help. A dollar goes a long way. Ten cents, fifty cents, just sharing the feed. People, If you don't have a dollar, simply just tuning into the feed, making some comments, hitting the reaction button. These are the things that will help the band... These are the things that I help the band, um, and they'll help Zach, because Zach, you know, Zach uh, could use it. Yeah, especially after the email from work I just got at 7 o'clock at night. Did you just get an email right now from work? Yeah. Would you care to share? I mean, you don't have to. My boss just said there was a mandatory meeting with the entire department, 3 p.m., one day. When, when there's a mandatory meeting in sepsis... Someone's leaving. Desiree, thank you for the stars. I love your lipstick here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you because I think you've you, you have a live dilemma. <laughs> so one thing that you would be donating to um, is of course the technical challenges that Melissa. And Lexi have had today with live broadcasting. Um, today, Melissa had started the, as you know, um, our wonderful singer, my girlfriend. Melissa Wolf is also the producer and engineer 
of the honeycomb hideout. Yeah. And she's behind she's behind uh she's behind oh you did? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm just Not holding it. Uh, I don't want to interrupt you. So yeah, so so she's behind the <laughs> she's behind the camera and Lexi's behind the, the paper. And usually <laughs> Um, at a combination uh, with me and Zach, we, we, you can usually get this thing started by 7.30. Today, I call this early. So you're early mm-hmm. today. So even with the lipstick and um, <laughs> the camera not being on immediately, we worked it out. If you're here now, the best thing you can do is share this shit. Because I, if we share it again, someone's going to call the fucking police. Share the feed. Thank you so much. Facebook is trying to protect us all mm. from over spamming independent heavy metal bands. We can't share That's the stuff. Right. Think of how much the world needs protection from more heavy metal bands sharing their mediocre music. We share it because we care. We share it because it's mediocre. <laughs> At best. All right. So, uh, um, yeah, thank you for all the people that are donating stars and the people that have been going to our shows and uh, the people that have been visiting the website. Um, those of you who have signed our guest book, those of you um, who are tuning in tonight, you guys are the backbone of what we do here. The people that show up are the most important people. Mm-hmm. Sometimes... Folks will stop me in the middle of the street, and they will say to me, William, what is the hardest part of being in a band? They'll ask me all the time, how long have you been in Sepsis? Of course, I've never been in any other band, Zach. So if anybody was misunderstood, um... I like being in this band a lot. That's why I've never been in any other band um, with both feet um, like I am this band. But people ask me all the time, what is the hardest part about being in a band? And the hardest part is showing up every week. The hardest part is not just you showing up. Um... The hardest part is having all five or six guys and gals continue to show up every week. Thank you, Brandon, for 10 stars. Thank Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. I always tell bands, um, especially if you're in a band and you haven't been together for more than two years, I always tell them the hardest part of being in a band is getting all five or six people in the room every week for band practice if you can if you can if you can get that going for a couple years then sometimes people get good enough at the music to start seeing um it's worth you know until people have been in the band for a while how do you know if you're good at the music or not you know most people most people have quit something within the first six months to a year and I don't care what it is. If you, I mean, if you ain't never did it before, if you started playing video games right now and you never played video games before, I think it'd be foolish to expect that you'd be good at it in six months. All the time and energy and, and effort and, and resources and intelligence that goes into the games, right? We were talking today that um, the Native Americans... Um, were the first to invented the six string guitar in this country. Isn't that beautiful? Did you know that? I didn't until today. Right, no, I don't. It's so beautiful. <laughs> I didn't until today either. Oh, well, yeah. It's the most beautiful and thing I've ever heard. And of course that there are there are many other countries that played drums and stringed instruments, but what mm-hmm. I thought was amazing because we're a rock and roll band, I thought it was amazing um, that the Native Americans had a six-string guitar-like instrument. And they had some other string. They had some other string instruments as well. Um, but that's it. The hardest thing to do is is to keep people excited, to get people in the room. And of course, people gotta last in the band long enough 
where everyone gets over the honeymoon period and people start getting really good at the music because let's face it it's hard to get fans until the music's good so if the band isn't the band long enough and no one can practice to the point of where they cognitively can see the value of the music then no one's really excited about it i mean how many things do you think people continue to do that they're not good at? People don't like doing shit that they're not good at. Mm. In fact, like, if you give somebody something to do and they're not good at it fucking instantly, a lot of times they'll just stop doing it. But isn't that the weirdest thing? Like, why would you expect to be good at something without putting a lot of energy into it? Or that you haven't done before, like, ever. Oh, no, the internet makes it sound, all sound so easy. <laughs> but people... That's true. But people had this misunderstanding before the internet, too. The newspaper made it seem so easy. <laughs> right. Well, I wonder if they made it seem easy when they were carrying all those blocks on their back on the way to the Mayan temples. I'm just kidding. At least they had guitar. Right? Um, but the moral of the story is people got to stick around and do something long enough sometimes to be able to measure its value. We talk a lot about this on like Road to the Swarm where like, sure, joining a band is great in the first six months because everybody's in a good mood. Nothing bad's happened yet. It's all sunshine and rainbows. It's all cookies and fucking creme. So sure, when you're winning awards and you're learning new tricks and the music kind of sounds good sometimes, you have all these layers and, and, and you have all these checkpoints that you can go through. And it kind of feels rewarding, right? Mm -hmm. But what happens when everybody knows all the music and everybody's done? We're done getting awards. We're done hitting high notes. We did all the scream. We did all the... I mean, there's some people that boredom will creep in. If they don't have more, if you're not constantly throwing stuff at them. But there's, there's more than just music to be good at in a band. And that's longevity. Again, when folks think about asking me these questions, you got to remember I've never been in another band. Not like this one. And I've been in this band for, what, 13 years or something? I stopped counting because it doesn't matter because this band changed my life but I've been in this band long enough I've been in the swamp I've been in the muck I've been in the mire we've been rejected we've been laughed at we've been made fun of we've had people come we've had people go we've had rumors we've had scandals we've had people quit we've had bad shows we've had people point the finger we've survived it we know what it means to be here. We know what it means to survive our differences. We know what it means to overcome the challenges. And we know what it means to hit a bad note. And we know what it means to recover. A bad note a bad show is a bad show. If you're two bad shows from quitting. Um, so I've been in this band for 13 years. People go, why? Why would you do something like that? Because this band changed my life in such a positive way. Rock and roll and guitar and music and being in this band. Not another band. I don't care about some other band. I don't want to be in another band. Because this is the band that changed my fucking life. This is the band that led me to sobriety. This is the band that led me to me getting to the point where I was confident to live the rest of my life fully. This was the band that encourages me to watch my health and stay fit. This is the band that encourages me to make healthy relationships and stay out of trouble and pay my bills and watch my tone and do my stretches. This is the band that continues to encourage me to not smoke, to open the door for old ladies. 
This is the band that changed my life. So when people, I don't know what you do in y'all band and what you do at home. I don't even give a shit because this is the band that's changed my life. But you're not going to have these life changing experience by sitting on your butt, celebrating yourself, or complaining about the circumstances you can't control. You see what I'm saying? So, the hardest thing will always be to get in the room with the band. For every individual member, the hardest thing will never be to play the music. You gotta be better at just playing music to be in this band. You actually have to be good at playing the personality. You got to be an expert at playing generosity. You got to be a master at playing friendship. You've got to be, you've got to have a limitless capacity to get good at learning how to play the family. See, some bands, you just got to play the fucking drums or whatever and run your mouth. This one, you have to do a little bit more than that. And, and in order to get more, you have to give more. You know what I'm saying? And, and like any instrument, like the violin or the drums, you're only going to get out of that instrument with what you put into that instrument. You know, whether you, you're a boxer or you, or, or you write books or you, you, um, you drive motorcycles, you're only going to get... You're only going to be able to visualize. You're only going to be able to project an image of success that matches your ambition, that matches your work ethic and your drive and your, and your authentic love for something. Um, yeah, so for sure, the hardest part will always be people getting in the room and everybody gets in in the room for different reasons thank you kevin for a hundred stars um thank you everybody at home whatever your reason is um for supporting us um and continuing to rock with us and continuing to learn and play with us means that you have agreed that you have continued to get better with us that means that we don't have glass ceilings and thresholds those of you that are with the swarm today are the remaining people that have survived and agreed and are determined on our, our quest and our goal for success and our goal to live life fully by being better versions of ourselves each and every day. By believing we can get this music tighter. By believing that we can play new venues. By believing that we can do things in rock and roll that no other rock and roll band has ever done. All right. Let's start the show. I, I never started a joint. <laughs> you guys, you guys are, I'll tell you, you guys know that the new single um, is coming out, Romance and Reality. There will be a music video to it. We've been talking about it nonstop. We've been talking about how we're going to shoot the music video, what it's supposed to look like. We still, don't, we still don't really know. But we do know that um, we plan on starting to shoot the music video soon. So, thank you, Kevin, for another 50 stars. Expect, um, thank you, Kev. Wow. Thank you. Heavy. Um, in other news, those of you that are in Connecticut, you don't want to miss the Opus Blizzard birthday bash. Woo. It's not even negotiable. No, you have to go. You it's to not go. compromisable. You have to go. Lexi said you have to go. You have to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said it. So get there. And and I think I think the um we are doing um VIP hangout at the Celebrity Hotel Suite with Zachy B. He's going to have his Komodo um, bathrobe on. Celebrity? Yeah, if you yeah. didn't know, we got the we got the Zachy B Komodo Celebrity Suite. Yeah. 
Does everyone get a kimono? Hold on. Did you guys see the last time we did the VIP Zacky B Celebrity Suite? Did you see? It was quality. That, that dive bomb is not right. It was quality. Oh, ah. uh, no. Nice. This guy had a... No. Did you see the professional major baseball league? He was... This guy had the celebrity suite on the diamond. Oh, my God. Yes. The diamond. Remember? Did you see it? You gotta watch Road to the Swarm. Oh if you didn't watch God. the final episode to Road to the Swarm, you'll never know. Conveniently in room 603. <laughs> <laughs> Desiree I love says, stuff like that. we aren't in Connecticut, but we will be there. Mm. Hell yeah. Love that. <laughs> Nobody throws a hotel party like a Zachy B hotel party. No. It's true. It's true. Oh. And, yeah. Oh. I wanna do I wanna it's do <laughs> This time, I, you know what was cool is like there were enough people last time. Well, the last um, the last time we did um, the Zachy B celebrity Komodo VIP, we never unzipped like the instruments. I think everybody was worn out from. Yeah, I brought my djembe and everything. Yeah, we had acoustic guitars. Yeah. It's funny, like we always like bring acoustic guitars and drums and stuff in case people want to jam. But it's like post show. Right. So I think people just want to like hang out at that point. No one wants to listen. No one wants to play music. That's like, let's go to the VIP and shut up. <laughs> oh, I wanted to play music. I just couldn't physically do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I was on planet Earth. Yo. <laughs> then where were you? Can we. Somewhere so, in the Milky Way. <laughs> right. We need to figure out a new way. <laughs> Where during these VIP Komodo Zacky B celebrity adventures, where I like that celebrity Komodo Zacky B celebrity adventures. I know I made it up. I like that. We're just wing we're winging it. I like that. All I remember is Will had a great time because I was playing '90s hip hop the whole time. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Yo! I think every time that we have a Zachy B hotel VIP Komodo celebrity experience, I think that should come with a main feature of 90s hip hop. Yes! Because yes. guess what? You're going to have me in a perfect mood. Yep. <gasps> dancing. What Holy dancing? shit. No, like, I walked into this thing and it was 90s. Bro. I was, the nostalgia was burning. Wasn't that your oh, yeah. mood? Every time, like, every every song that came on, well, instantly was like, whoa! <laughs> oh, man. I was loving that shit. If you want to see William bug out to nostalgia of 90s, R&B, hip-hop, yeah. all that shit. Right. It was like the VIP. soundtrack to your childhood. Oh, man. I think, you know, I could, somebody could walk up to me with an earbud. Actually, don't do this. But, <laughs> but, but. Don't do yeah, this. Yeah, don't do this. But. In a fictitious world where everybody's ears were really sanitized, <laughs> you can take out... It's not like my ears are any better. You don't want to share none of my ear stuff. That's awful. Don't act like you do either. Don't even try it. Because nobody... You want to know why? Because nobody likes anybody's ear stuff. Nobody out of all the fetishes and stuff that you hear, you know, in the categories on the porn sites, all the stuff that you ever hear about, you never hear. You hear feet and butts. Somebody lick an asshole. You never hear nobody who say, I want some earwax. No one asks Ugh. for it. No one searches for it. It doesn't even exist. Nobody is ever tuned in or turned on by somebody's ear goo. Or mm. belly lint. <laughs> I don't even know how you came up with that. But but well, those two things are terrible things. I'm actually going to disagree they with that one, but we'll talk later. Oh, my God! It's not belly lint specifically, but I, I feel oh, like... Oh, the part is fine. It's the goo. Right. But the, the ear is fine. It's just that it, every anybody that knows about their own ears, like, put a one in the chat if you want to share your ear goo. Although I do have plenty of it. You want to know why? Because oh, you're a musician. And people that listen, you think it's a joke. But this is a real, this is a real thing. No one's going to believe me. And this is a segue 
into buying earplugs from Eargasm Earplugs. Promo code, one word, all caps, sepsis banned. Be and I'm a because, <laughs> because people that listen to music and people that are in environments that are vibrating at high volumes naturally seem to create and generate more earwax. People that listen to loud music with headphones or go to concerts or don't use ear protection in loud environments tend to be waxy people. You little waxy people. Now listen, if you're listening to rock and roll, I know all my friends, they go to heavy metal and rock and roll and hip hop clubs and they listen to loud music. Okay? And we're going to get into this twerking thing in a minute. But I will tell Wait, you something. Why'd you point to me about that? Whoa, 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 we got to talk about this in a minute. Okay, so the thing is, is while you're working and you're leaning and you're jerking, oh, this sounds bad, but mm -hmm. as you're twerking, okay, in the club, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. you can't do any jerking in the club, just twerking. Wait, oh. <laughs> Not in that club. <laughs> it's a different club. What you want to do is make sure that you go out and get yourself, select a pair of eargas and earplugs because... Not only do they protect your ears, not only do they, um, not only do they protect waxy people from hearing damage in loud environments due to music and other loud noises, but they also allow you to hear the transients in the music while still blocking out harmful frequencies that damage your ears. Make sure you get yourself a pair of Eargasm earplugs. Um, promo code Sepsis Band. That's S E P S I S S B A N D Band. All one word. Mm -hmm. That's for you waxy people out there. Like me. Yeah. Every time I think of every time you say waxy people, I just think of those like wax like celebrity like statues oh, that they have cool. at the wax museum. I'm just thinking of. Wax off, wax on. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking, nah, man, they got this shit, man. They, <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell you something right now. If y'all don't know about this, then you guys are just you need to you need to you need to talk to Zachy B on camera. <laughs> but they make I think it's the greatest stuff. They make they make edible, burn proof, aromatherapy, erotic wax. What? Oh, yeah, we used to buy it all the time. Edible? You can eat it? That you can mess. spread Saves it. You can the eat mess. it. Hold on. That you can spread mess. it. You can eat it. You can do it. You can do it. Oh. So there you go. For those of you who ain't grown yet, there you go. <gasps> what? Okay, now about this twerking thing. That's amazing. Gio <laughs> said that if we won the new, 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 new England Music Awards... Gio said that you was going to twerk. <gasps> you didn't twerk. Did you tell Gio that you were going to twerk if we won the award? Did I? <laughs> Gio. Confirmed. Via satellite. Somebody call <laughs> Gio and Via get him Starling. on the line. <laughs> He's in the chat. Okay. Starlinking to Gio. Confirm. So, Confirm I don't know if this Gio. is true. He said this is true. Dot, dot, dot. I <gasps> oh. So we got to set up this thing. So... Look in the future, tune into our pages for a reel, and you just might see some twerking from Zachy B. Okay. I'm the myth the mighty. <laughs> I love when we're in like that shot in a guitar center when I'm like, and not to be outdone, but he's like, I don't know how this happened. We're in mid conversation, and there's this lady like beelining for the door at. Guitar Center, and, and me and this man, in a, like, we're in a locked conversation. Like, I don't even know how he noticed this lady coming across the parking lot. But he stopped mid-conversation, pivoted, swung around, opened the door for this lady, 
Like, and I'm ta- and I'm having a full blown conversation with Zach. This is how polite and gallant this man is. He swung, bro. He swung. He came out of nowhere. Like, oh, you know how they parachute on Fortnite and all that. <laughs> Yo, he came in and he opened the door for this lady. And I'm t- and I'm talking, and in mid conversation, I'm like, yeah, Zach. And what we'll do is we'll get the quarter inch cable and XLRs, and not to be outdone, Zachy B. I in, in, in one fucking oh, moment. Oh. He opens the door, never breaks conversation, and gets the young lady into Guitar Center. And she, I mean, she was so happy. Not to be outdone. Ladies and gentlemen, Zahi B! That's me. <laughs> that sounds like a theme song. Ladies and gentlemen, we can make, Zachy we can make that B. Happen. And we go, that's me. <laughs> Oh man! It, you know what that definitely could be. Um, it sounds like a um, definitely sounds like something that's, that could happen during our reality TV show often. I thought you were gonna talk about beat tags and having that be the tag. <laughs> well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Zachy, you should make hip hop tracks. Zachy then, we'll, then we'll do. Do, then we'll do, have do, a Zachy B tag. <laughs> That, that, that's Zachy B, Zachy B from the 603. I'm representing you, and I'm representing all the people from the 03052, y'all. <laughs> He's on it like a mug. All right, let's talk about Snoop Dogg. What? Snoop Dogg! Okay, I don't know anything about this, really. What's going on with Snoop Dogg? Before we get crazy, What's happening? we have to talk about what this story is not. Okay. It's not about Snoop Dogg. What? what? Then why would you say, let's talk about Snoop Dogg? Thank I'm, you, Anthony, for the follow. I'm very confused. I want to talk about Snoop Dogg. Okay. And I want to talk about <laughs> marijuana. And I want to talk about Snoop Dogg and marijuana. Yeah, those two usually go hand in hand. <laughs> right. And I want to focus in, everybody. All right, the thing with the Snoop Dogg and the marijuana is this. I have to bring up Snoop Dogg and marijuana. Initially. But what I have to bring up is not about Snoop Dogg or marijuana. The other day, you know how the internet is. Mm -hmm. I saw a post and... I don't usually believe a lot of stuff on the internet. But sometimes, you know, the more outrageous something is, it almost seems believable because it's just so fucking outrageous. You're like, no, come here. But that's like the stuff that's like the most bullshit now. Right. Everything is like crying wolf now. Mm -hmm. In order to get anybody to look at anything, you have to fucking, someone has to say rape or somebody has to say some terrible bomb, you know, and then then people will react, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I reacted to this one. I mean, this cut through the noise. Yeah. All the mass shootings and all the racism and all the loud heavy metal and all the crazy stuff and the elections. This cut through. The most serious thing I have heard and probably... I was stunned. Like, what's happening? I saw a post in the news that... Snoop Dogg had stopped smoking weed. What? Bullshit. Wait, hold on. <laughs> what? What? Snoop Dogg. You saw what? Now, I, I've seen things about Sorry. Putin. I've seen things about Chuck E. Cheese and Ronald fucking McDonald. What is happening? I Somebody said something. Cord Slipknot broke up. I don't give a fuck. But when I heard the Snoop Dogg stopped smoking weed, now you wait, you wait a second. You wait right there. Snoop Dogg stop smoking weed? You fucking hold it. This is a publicity stunt! This is bullshit! <laughs> Gio said Snoop could single-handedly collapse the THC market by saying he's done. Every dispensary in the country had a minor stroke. <laughs> Yo, this is the, I've heard some bullshit in my time. Pearl Harbor, the, 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 what was the other one? What was the other one there? Vietnam. We don't know what the fuck we were doing there. What's the other place? Whatever. 
We had the hot war, the warm war, the cold war. Then we, then we knocked down the fucking towers. Everyone cared about it for like three seconds. Then the internet came out. And then internet memory came out. Ever since we got social media and internet memory, we don't remember fucking shit. Yeah. But one thing I know for sure is that we were good for Snoop Dogg smoking fucking weed. What the fuck? That's everyone's dream, to smoke a joint. We've dealt with fucking Ukraine and Russia, fucking auto-tune. We've dealt with all kinds of shit. We cannot deal with Snoop Dogg not smoking fucking weed. We can't do it's this. It's an outrage. <laughs> what is going on? Many things. Is everything seen. okay? Everything was okay until we learned... Because, like, why is Snoop Dogg not smoking fucking weed? What the fuck happened? That's what I want to know. Did something happen to... To Snoop or to the weed? Yeah. Oh, don't tell me it started. What's it? <laughs> the people ruining the Can weed. somebody get Snoop on the line? You know, Snoop Dogg's <laughs> like one of those people that's so hard to meet. I've met a lot of motherfuckers, bro. It's hard to meet this motherfucker. Now, when you say that, you mean like you haven't met him, or like that was one of the few times you were starstruck? <laughs> no, I yo, let me tell you something. I would be starstruck if I seen Snoop. I really oh, would. Oh, I would be. fangirl for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely like him. Yeah, yeah, that would do it. That would do it for me. I the next, I'll tell you what. The only the only rapper I was like like temporarily starstruck when I ever met him was a, a rapper named Razcast. Who's really good friends with Snoop? Like, technically, Snoop could have been there. I was gonna say, Snoop have performed in Hampton Beach at the ballroom. Yeah, that's why I saw Criss Cross. It's one of my first concerts. Huh. Yeah, you know who Criss Cross is? I know the name, yeah. Put a one in the chat if you know, if you heard Criss Cross. I know everything from uh, anything that old people know, I know. <laughs> What is the fourth line in the Sugar Hill Gang song? Give me a second. I don't even have to say the title because you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, it's to the bang bang boogie, say up jump the boogie to the rhythm of the yeah. boogie beat. Motel, hotel, oh, holiday inn. I got gotcha. you Come on, man. Wow, that was incredible. Well, ESPN, line. you guys so, saw that live. I said a hip the hop. ES I gave, it to the, gave it to the hip hip hop. I guess it depends where you start the stanza. It's open to interpretation. For sure. <laughs> that was crazy. You so, guys saw that. I just wanted to say that nothing I'm talking about really matters. I'm not actually talking about, um, as much as I, I am glad that Snoop Dogg smokes weed, and I'm glad that weed is smoked by Snoop. Like The whole thing is good for me. Uh, but I'm not really talking about that. What I am talking about is the way that I reacted to the post. The way that maybe some of you reacted to me reacting to it. It's not necessarily Thank real. Thank you, Kevin, and, for the stars. In fact, I'm not so sure that the story's true, okay? And I did an experiment. I was going to go look, mm -hmm. like I normally do with topics that we have on this program. Normally I hear something like that. I go, oh, this is funny for the podcast. And then I start doing a whole bunch of research and I write down my notes. Then we write a funny joke or something like that. But I don't have that. Um, I just wanted to report to you that Snoop Dogg stopped smoking weed. And I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. What I thought was significant, that even with all my training and everything that I know about the internet, right? What's the big takeaway from this? You still fell for it. I fell for it. And that's what the fuck is up. We got to stop doing. If I can do it, if I can fall for the bullshit. Now, they don't, they don't stick me with, with stories about Thanksgiving. They don't confuse me about the internet being something more than a data collection service. I'm not confused about what we're doing here. I'm not confused about conspiracies. In fact... The only one thing we know about conspiracies is that they're not very provable. They lack evidence and proof. By definition, the word conspiracy means just not true. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, so, 
I'm showing you this because sometimes people say stuff about us online. You know? And then people react to that. Or you might see a, a small clip from me, and it's only 20 seconds of the first clip that you've ever seen from me. And you might think that you know me. Or you might think I'm a nice guy or a bad guy, and I don't think any of that important. I think what's important is we've gotten so used to just looking and scrolling, and I shoot my mouth off all the time how none of this shit affects me. I'm like the fucking social media terminator, you know what I mean? But we're all affected by this shit in some way. And I wanted to show you, it might have not been racism or Ukraine or the next, the Vatican or whatever hot issues are going on right now. But we all got something, right? And he made a joke about 90s hip hop. But 90s hip hop meant something to me. And I thought it was a great segue to show you how the internet has a way, disease has a way, trolling and being toxic and bad behaviors online and shitty advertisements and this fucked up distortion we have with social media has a way of creeping its way into all the cracks of our lives, mm -hmm. into our childhood, into our trauma, into our nostalgia. Now, <clears throat> I say this because... <clears throat> Guys, you ever wonder why Bill Gates never really got into making phones? Mm. Has it ever occurred to you? Have you ever thought to yourself, wait, all these guys came out, you know, Nokia and the Razors and all the big companies, all the big tech companies all had a phone, huh? I never really thought. How come? Much into that, the Bill Gates thing. Mm. Yeah, so this, this program, this, this, this program and this podcast isn't so much about facts. It's about asking questions. Mm hmm I don't have any facts for any of you. We just gather articles off the internet and then we talk about them here. Um, we present them and then we ask a bunch of silly questions. Mm. This is not a podcast that is designed to teach you with facts. This is a podcast that is designed to encourage you to educate yourself mm. based on conversation. You see the difference there? And inside that conversation, the responsibility is hosted within questions. Do y'all understand that? I don't know if they understand that at home. I feel crazy. I know you guys understand me. Um, so the reason why I was talking about Bill Gates and I was talking about cell phones, because when I was listening to Bill Gates growing up as a kid, when he was asked about cell phones and why he hadn't made one or gotten to the market, when smartphones were so big, and smartphones, everybody was making a smartphone. Isn't that fucking smart? Well, the smartest guys never made smartphones. Weird. How come the smartest fucking scientists and people during the dot-com era, during the smartphone era, how come they stayed away from cell phones? Because they knew the effects they would do to people. Do you think they care about that, really? Well, they there are good. Children. There are good effects and there are bad effects. Well, everything. They would, well, they have children. People don't care about kids. Well, don't they care about their own kids? No. Not even Do the you know smartest any, people. Did my parents care about me? Well, that's true. That's true. I don't want to get. I don't want to get any more personal in this conversation. But that's do parents true. care about their kids? You guys can answer that question. The fact that they were smart. Though. No, let's keep it real. There are some of us here where our parents cared about us, and some of them didn't. True. And caring doesn't mean you're right. right. Caring doesn't mean you're fucking smart. That's true. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, but the the big reason I believe that Bill G I said I believe. I believe he stayed away from cell phones is because he knew something that I know. And we talk about it all the time. Our internet memory is very short. Our social media memory is very short. You act like that we've been vaping for years or something. We act like Google's been around for years. Google's like 23 or like 26 or something. Like most of us are older than Google. I know I am. The point is, 
So this stuff hasn't been around for years and years. Like we we feel like Bluetooth's been around since the fucking dinosaurs or something, but it hasn't. Um, and the point I'm trying to make is, um, a lot of the smart guys stayed away from smartphones because they knew that they wouldn't be here for long. See, if you're really smart, you know this stuff's going to come and go. Like I tell you guys over and over and over again, we convinced everybody to jump in. Listen, we jumped in to the automobile. Okay, when Americans were introduced to the automobile, they wouldn't get the fuck in the car. Physically, they wouldn't get in it. Why? Because it's dangerous. The Internet, they wouldn't get in the car because it's dangerous. They wouldn't free the slaves. Freedom's dangerous. The internet. They were scared of the internet because it's dangerous. They actually thought that we'd be going to libraries for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Fools. No, no. Every time we come out with an invention, nobody wants to put their foot in it. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Bluetooth, U-Tooth. Like we are, I mean, it's the thing, we tooth. Now everybody tooths. Mm. Everything's scary until it's not. Until it's replaced. Right. Until so, enough people have dipped their foot in the water. Thank you. Nobody wants to be the first to get killed going over the bridge. Hmm. Once enough people go over the bridge, everybody goes, oh, fuck it. It could fall down. Pete, head over. See how it is. Right. And, and, and. Test it. Right. Oh, he didn't die. Let's go. Right. Right. And then everybody. Or, oh, shit. He fell. Don't go. <laughs> But that, but that's the thing, you know what I mean? Um, and that's why, that's why the remix is so popular in this country. Because we love doing shit that looks safe. Shit that's worked before. Google isn't the first search engine, guys. They just made it a little better, okay? Yeah. It's just people, this we're notorious for stealing shit and making it better. Slipknot is not the first heavy metal band with masks on. Yeah. Neither is Kiss. <laughs> Whoa, that was a killer reel right there, bro. I love that. That was so great. Timestamp. <laughs> Got you. Oh, no, that was so dope, dude. Um, but it's a great point. It's a great point. The remix is the most popular song to this day in America. Yeah, they just steal it and make it our own. Um, so... All this stuff hasn't been around a very long time. I mean, bridges have been around for a long time. But hell, there were bridges that were built with ancient technology that stand stronger than modern bridges. We know that. Are they still up to this day? Of course they are. Well, many are. The that survived the world wars. Well, sure. the, the difference <laughs> between that and like the modern built stuff is... Yeah. Roads and bridges back then were built with slave labor, not for profit like they are now. Oh, that's tough. So, man. when you build something to last, it's different than when you build something that you want to be destroyed so that you can have people pay for it again. Uh -huh. Man, that sounds like the music industry. That mm -hmm. sounds like our planet. That's every industry. That sounds like the clothing industry. That sounds like the education industry. That sounds like the agricultural industry. That sounds like our planet. That mm -hmm. sounds like... That was a very, very, very smart... Um, that was smart, bro. I like that. That was awesome. Yeah, I, not, and, and I don't want to get too far. That was great. That was great energy on that, bro. Um, that's why you're on this podcast. That's what we love here. Um, I love when I hear stuff like that because it's just like it's so transparent, it's so clean, it's so clean, bro. Um, hats off to you on the statement. I just, I the, the thing is, is like, is like this. I believe that a lot of smart guys stayed away from cell phones because they knew they wouldn't be around long enough. What if you knew that cell phones were going to be here and gone? The smartest people, just chestnut checkers. 
the smartest people are working on the technology that comes after cell phones. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think the true masters and the true um, inventors and the true people that are into the, the next experiments of the world. Um, people were just as nervous about the internet as they were about um, cameras on every corner. Mm. I grew up. On, I grew up in prison. There was a camera on every corner where I grew up. I grew up in institutions, so we grew up. There were cameras in the rooms. They watched you naked. They fucking beat you up on camera, or whatever. But that's the world I come from. So like, when I came home, people were like, "There's no cameras on the block." I was like, "There's cameras everywhere. Fuck you." And they're conveniently down whenever right. something happens. Social media never bothered me because social media is the closest thing that resembles prison to me. Oh. Did you hear what I just said, everybody? Oh. I've been I've been to other countries. I've been in, I, bro, I've been all, I've met all kinds of people in my life. I'm 43 years old. As far as social constructs are concerned, I did 17 years in institutions. I did 12 years in state pen, in state penitentiary. I physically did 8 of those years. The closest thing that I can say resembles a prison construct out here in society the social media that's how I that's how I know how to move this band around in it how do you feel about that I don't think any belo oh. any, anybody belongs here and uh, honestly um and this is at the level of um I don't know, um, accountants, lifers, lawyers, military people. That's when when I when I use the internet, um, I use it uh, in all of the internet. I look at it. I use it for what it was created for. It's a it's a military uh, tool. It's a military tool, and um, it's a law enforcement tool. Um, but for consumers, it's a data collection tool mm -hmm. for advertising. It's a big flea market where they collect all of your information, they pool it together acquisitionally, and they learn how to sell you shit. But most people, most people don't realize that social media isn't even social anymore. That's how deep they're in it. They haven't figured that out yet. We'll talk about more of that later. But um, I believe that um, that some 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 of the bigger tech companies. Um, didn't go after smartphones because I think they knew that they wouldn't be here long. So when you think of like advertisement and stuff like that, as soon as the gadgets, as soon as the screen shape changes on these gadgets, so will the advertising environment. Oh, of course, the advertising environment's always adapting. Do you see what I'm saying? So what really controls the internet? Advertisements. Mm-hmm. So as soon as the phones aren't rectangle anymore, they won't do short form video. They'll do something else. They'll do something else. Mm -hmm. So that's why people that are doing reels and TikToks and stuff like that right now, if you're a band, if you're a company, if you're if you've got all your eggs in one basket right now and you're and the bulk of your strategy is of course right now, what's hot right now? Vertical short form video. But if that's all that you're good at, then you're in trouble Right. In the, as far as the future of advertising. Now, how long have we been doing vertical short form video? When did that become popular? TikTok. I'll just, yeah. I'll just get... Yeah, I was going to say... 2020 long, yeah. TikTok. I'm, I, you know what I mean? We were the, one of the first people to get paid from this, from this service. Um, and... The need for vertical video and apps and current advertisement models will all disintegrate. When there is a new way, say for instance, and I'm just going to go as an experiment, say for instance that we start doing our <clears throat> advertisements in um, table-mounted holograms. It will change everything about the way we listen to music, mm -hmm. the way we shop, the way we, as soon as the screen shape changes, it changes the way that we eat. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's why the smartest people didn't get into smartphones. The smartest people are into advertising. Oh, absolutely. So if, so if you know the future of advertising, all you need to do is make the gadgets of the future. Mm. The gadgets for advertising. Think about it. When, when newspapers, he was talking about newspapers and magazines. Mm -hmm. Think, fuck all that. Let's go back to scrolls and people writing on walls. When did ancient civilization become modern civilization? Melissa. What? Writing. When did modern civilization become modern civilization and was no longer ancient civilization? When we developed writing, alphabets, when we could record, when we can remix, when we can TikTok, when we can Vine, when we can copy each other. Because if we can't... <laughs> Because if we can't copy each other, we can't get better at it. You make a search engine. It sucks. I need to copy you and make it better for it to be effective. Yeah. You make a law. Your law sucks. I copy the law. I rewrite it. And I make bylaws and amendments to make it effective. To, it, it needs to be updated. It needs to be modernized. Mm. We went from chiseling into fucking walls, then to fucking painting on scrolls. The, the writing, what made modern civilization modern? The writing. We went from drawing smiley faces on fucking pyramids and, and walls, and now we're back to writing smiley faces on tablets again. Yeah, we don't need phonetical diction. <laughs> you can tell he works in a school, because them kids need phonetical diction. But... This is my point. If you can forecast, if you can foresee what's after the cell phone, then you never need to make it. You can start working on the technology that is in tandem with the technology in the language of the future. So, getting back to Snoop Dogg, right? I bet y'all thought I was out of my shit. Hey, I want to figure out who's smoke. We're going to get to it. So, will the need for vertical video apps in all current advertising models still exist? Well, of course not. Once the device changes, so will everything else to follow it. When they were advertising on newspapers, we ate out of the newspaper. When we were advertising on the, on the TV and the radio, we ate out of the radio. We feared out of the radio. We voted like the radio. We fought like the TV. We fight. We live. We have sex like we advertise. Ugh. Because if all we're doing is advertising on social... Think of, think of this for a second. It's like having sex with everybody with no condom. Social media is the worst way to digest anything that you think you're experiencing. Because only useless information travels at light speed. Bam. And they've tried to convince us that we need to hear and learn everything so quickly that we can't even fucking process it naturally. So when I looked at Snoop Dogg, I thought he quit smoking fucking weed. Because they targeted you. The even the impervious, smoking. bulletproof, ex-convict William Savant that was raised by psychopaths and judges and lawyers, even I myself, was blindsided and fell victim. Yes. A perception of what is real and what is fake and how that could impact people's trust in digital marketing is a very strong conversation that we will be having in the future. Which is why transparency is key 
especially when depicting realistic scenes with AI content in order to maintain a level of trust with any audience in the future. Meaning, if Facebook has AI images of Snoop Dogg and they're saying that he smoked weed or he didn't and we find out otherwise, it will lose all value in, in credibility and the reason why we created AI to begin with. And that's to get rid of lying ass human supervisors. Now, can somebody tell me the truth? Was the Snoop Dogg video synthetic? Because... I don't think uh, humans will ever be able to see if it really is or not. Because the, so, so the claim is the, the claim is is I was pulled in, but I was I was pulled in and lied to. And I want to point out that after all these years, look at how easy it would be to even pull in somebody like myself, or any or one of you. All they need to do is show you a character from your childhood, and he needs to say something crazy or emotional, and and, and you're pulled into it. Knowing as much as I know, can anybody tell me um, if that video at home, if anybody in the chat can tell me um, if indeed the Snoop Dogg rumor is real? Or if I'm just getting duped? All right. Let's talk about Thanksgiving. There are two main reasons that Native, Are Native American restaurants are not common. By the way, Gio said it was marketing. He's selling a smokeless grill. Oh, shit. I'm pissed off. <laughs> I'm so fucking pissed off. The Gen Z loves it. Han says he, he calls fake news. That is fucking genius. So Hans dude. loves it, she hates it. That you see is how that is? Fucking genius. That is that is genius. He duped everybody. But, he but, duped but you, everybody. But, did, did you, but do you hear what I said though? Wow. Did you hear Yeah, you're talking about marketing and advertising and how it's changing. This is what they're doing. Wow, dude. Whoa. Okay. Well, it's a play on words. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes, but what I'm trying to explain to all of you is I understand the meme marketing. Mm -hmm. We all know how to meme market. We all know how to catfish. That's deep. We all know how to bait and hook. And we're, what, we're, what they're saying is, though, what they're saying is, though, what you need to consider is how much of this is actually good for Snoop Dogg. How much of this is good for the grill company? You started off with a lie. Mm. Yeah. That's what it's addressing. That is the question. And I think that that could be missed so easily, guys. That's the whole he point of me everybody. going. Yeah. That's the whole point of me. They wow. used what I'm saying is, though. You feel me out. Our internet memory is short. Our perception of what is real and what is fake and how that could impact people's trust in digital marketing. Mm -hmm. That impacts me poorly. I go, oh, you fucking duped me? I ain't buying. Mm -hmm. this, if if, sepsis, if sepsis goes online, this would be terrible for sepsis. For us to go on and make jokes about our products or to use our credibility what little we have. It, people have grown up with Snoop Dogg, so they trust him. Mm -hmm. So when I saw him and I said, hey, you quit smoking weed, he burnt that trust with me. Like he burned the weed. Mm. He used his credibility as a weed smoker and burned his credibility as a person. By trolling everybody. Hold on. Or did he? Because it's not him. It's AI. Okay. And that's what I'm talking about. There's that that's what we're addressing here. There's a much deeper layer than advertising or marketing or Snoop Dogg or weed. 
that's there's products now that can make a digital Melissa and say that she believes in something mm-hmm. or she's gonna do something and it and it's gonna and it could ruin her credibility. Yep. That's fucking crazy. <clears throat> They can make it talk like me, look like me. Right, and say that she believes in something or she's voting something. Or she think about how people use screenshots, dude, to smash and destroy each other already. Mm -hmm. People take a sit, people take people will take 15 seconds of somebody saying something and turn that into the worst fucking 15 seconds of their life. By not looking at the 15 seconds before or the 15 seconds after the film. And this is the worst kind of shit. You're taking a snapshot of Snoop Dogg or what people think he is. You're taking a beautiful woman and you're catfishing somebody. You're taking a picture of, of a woman that's not her. Behind it's a 40-year-old man. It's a 55-year-old man dressed up as a little girl playing online with your daughter. Are you okay with this? Now, you, you think it's about Snoop Dogg and his weed and fireplaces. There's a bigger thing happening. It's not that genius when people are getting hurt. It's not that genius if children and adults share the same marketing space. Mm-hmm. Listen to what I'm saying to you. The internet is not a world where we separate the play space with our children. Our children are celebrities along with us. They're actors along with us. In fact, there are no governing licenses or identifiers online yet. So you can be a 55-year-old man and it's perfectly legal to pretend to be a minor. I don't care about what people do in their private space as adults. But I'm talking about how children spend their time on the internet with advertising. Mm -hmm. You got to remember, if this was just an an adult play space, where adults did all the advertising and we did all the content here, it'd be one thing. This would be a whole different conversation. You know. A lot of these sites are also, you know, in court for Mm -hmm. harming minors right now. This stuff, you know, for a long time has been key topics of Silicon Valley and how harmful this stuff really is. There's so much power behind it, nobody can turn it off. And that is the argument with AI, is once it becomes so luxurious, once it becomes so convenient, how are you going to turn it off? It's not about weed. It's not about Snoop Dogg. It's about your rights. I don't really care. As I told you, I, you know, when I came out, I had there were cameras on every corner. And I heard all the civilians going, oh my God, there's cameras. They're going to know about my privacy. Everybody was scared about people finding out what they were jerking off to online. But I grew up in the joint. You know, I had nothing. You did what you had to do. Everybody saw everything you did. Bad or good. It was a consequence for everything. Bad or good. So now that I live out here, I, have, I don't think anything differently. There's a consequence for everything that we do out here. Bad or good. The difference is, do you guys know that? See, I know that because I grew up in the court system. Do you, do you guys know that at home? The two main reasons Native American restaurants are not common. The first is monetary. The image of Native Americans has always been advertised to be poor. We advertise Native Americans as poor people that walk around with rags and seashells and plants and shit on their head. The image of Native Americans has always been advertised here as if the people are likely to come from poverty. You ever notice that? 
The image of Native Americans in this, company, in, this, in this country, the image of them in books and cartoons are always like as if they're coming from poverty, as if they're homeless. Hmm. Probably because... Well, as if they have no sense of property. Yeah. You ever notice that? Yeah, what the fuck? Anyway. Like living off the land, they have no sense of... Well, it's because we've always had to portray Natives as savages. Well, and you can't, you know, if, if the other thing is, um, before we get going here, is if... You're going to take somebody's land from them. You kind of have to pretend they don't have it. Right. You know, if you know, well, if, 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 right, if you have a home, let's say this is your home, and you and I have to pretend like you have no sense of ownership or property if I'm going to take it from you. Yeah. I'm not taking anything from you. You don't own it. You have to protect me on some things. Right. Um, or else nobody's going to take it. No one's going to join me in, right. in, in, yeah. in, in taking it from you. Um, they might think it's a bad you. idea. <clears throat> right. But if you can justify it, well, it's not hers. God told it's not them. Lexi's. Um, so the image of Native Americans has always been advertised as them being poor people or that their people are likely to come from poverty itself. So restaurants um, are expensive businesses to start. So that's one reason that you don't see Native American restaurants in this country. Because restaurants are expensive to start, and everybody knows that the image of Native Americans in this country are poor, huh? So even if they, they don't try, make good, they don't make good candidates. Even if they try, they would still get turned. Um, the other big reason is um, actually uh, the worst reason, and that's because of cultural. Uh, Zach was talking about it earlier. In order to justify relocating indigenous people off their land, you had to convince everyone that the native culture was not anything worth living or saving. Huh? All right. So, more broadly, America has just been trained for a long, long time, as long as we can recall, that native people were just sort of scraping by they were scraping along the land in rags and poverty, barely surviving before the heroic pilgrims came along and appropriately developed the land and developed the civilized world. Huh? That does sound similar to what I was taught in school. Now this isn't something, this isn't because I'm black. This is, this, this is Wikipedia. This isn't like... This isn't my opinion or something like that. This is what they teach in the American Yeah, quick Google search can verify. Right, right. This isn't like something I made up and then I wrote it down and then put it. It's a colorful commentary, sure. Um, I just want to go over a few myths. Um, the myth is that friendly people that we call Indians, okay? The myth is that there are these people, okay? Um, not Native Americans, people that we called Indians. I don't, you know what I mean? They're not the same type of people. But the myth is that there were these friendly people um, in an unidentified tribe welcomed the pilgrims to America to teach them how to live in this new place, to sit down to dinner with them, and then they planned to disappear. So right, right now, that, 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 that people showed up to Cape Cod and Plymouth and all those other places, and their waiting was an unlabeled, transparent group of people that were just waiting to show everybody how to plant crops. They were just waiting, friendly, welcoming, and the reason why that they were there was naturally to teach the Puritans how to hunt turkey. Okay, that's the story. Um, that's the story. Um, so, they welcome the pilgrims into America and teach them how to live in this new place. They sat down to dinner with them and they promised the pilgrims to disappear. Huh? So they just basically were like, we're going to teach you how to live here, but then we're... We we're want nothing. Right, we don't want anything. We don't care, but we're going to... 
He has all these resources and riches and rituals and methods. We're going to take all this time investing in you, and we're going to disappear. The plan is to disappear. They handed off America to the, to the Puritan people so they could create a great nation dedicated to liberty, an opportunity in Christianity for the rest of the modern world to profit from. That's the story, and it's about Native people consenting to colonialism. It's a bloodless and, in many ways, extension of the ideology of today. I hope you all enjoyed that. That was a great fairy tale, Will. <laughs> I, I did not enjoy that fairy tale. I'm yeah, it sounds it. like it was made up, but... I'm going to clean it up like this. Now, how did it really happen? History doesn't begin for the Native people... The biggest myth, okay, the biggest myth is that history doesn't begin for the native people until Europe gets here. Okay, I, I just need to say that that is a myth. Um, that's the biggest myth, that Native Americans and their history started then. These people were here hundreds of thousands of years. So their history doesn't start at Plymouth Rock. That's what I'm saying. But when we talk about the history of Native Americans, we're not ever talking about their history. We're only talking about Puritan history. Mm -hmm. um, so the myth is, is that people had been, um, that the Native people uh, didn't have a history until the Europeans arrived. But people had been in the Americas for 12,000 years since the, and since the beginning of time. But we can record about 12,000 years of people living here. And uh, this is also according to people that are native to here. Um, the myth is that having a history started with the English and them having the history with the English is a way of dismissing all of that. So anytime that we start their history with England, we're dismissing their actual history. Um, the second is that the arrival of the Mayflower is some kind of first contact episode. It's not. Um, with respect to the tribe, the Wampanoagans, somebody can help me out with that, that's Wampanoag. great. You gotta know how to um, pronounce it. That's oh, tricky. That's tricky. They had a century of contact with Europeans, and it was extremely bloody, and it involved slave raiding. At least two, and maybe more, when the pilgrims arrived, spoke English and already had been to Europe and back and knew how the very organizers of the pilgrims' venture was. So when you hear about the story of um, the great feast, what they're referring to um, is they had taken some slaves previously, some Native American slaves, and they had brought them to Dutch and brought them to Holland and brought them to, to Europe. And there, some of the Native Americans had learned English um, to then return later on and, and, and is a part of what you hear um, as the Great Feast. But everybody knows that the Great Feast was not called Thanksgiving and that Thanksgiving, um, Thanksgiving is um, a Civil War holiday. Um, thanks, you can look that up. Uh, Thanksgiving is a Civil War holiday. And what the Native Americans used to um, celebrate um, was the harvest, mm -hmm. which is very different than the Civil War. So um, Lexi has some cool um, Native American stuff to talk about um, because I think it's important because nobody knows. What do you got, Lex? I have a list of foods, of fruits, and I also have a list of animals 
that we all eat to this day that are not native here at all. It, it's just not here. We, and, and one of them actually surprised me, and one of them is cantaloupe. Oh, wow. Cantaloupe Can is not from here. It's not? I'm heartbroken. I don't know why I would be. I feel like a fucking Puritan. If you think that that is heartbreaking, are you ready for this one? I'm never going to guess it. Apples. No, sir. Yes. Yes. Apples are not native here. Really? Mm -hmm. Like all apples, though? Apples aren't native here. Oh, my God. That's They're fucking crazy. Um, Where are they from? No, I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't write down where they're from. <laughs> that's next week. <laughs> um, another one that's not native here is oranges. Like, like oranges. Florida oranges? Yeah. Like I, I, oranges. They're not from... They're not from Native America. They're not from America. Mm. Huh. <laughs> And then... I was going to say such a bad joke. I just won't do it. Another you one? You can tell me later. I will. That was a good one. Here's another one that's going to surprise you all. Peaches. Peaches aren't from here? Peaches are not from here. I love that seems so American. Right? We don't it's know not. shit. It's not. Well, yeah, it's... I mean, if you found out apple it's pie... It's the remix. We it. stole it. <laughs> like, what's more American than apple pie? Apparently a lot. <laughs> Dude, maybe that's why they say that, though. Oh. Oh no. Don't you hate finding out what's in your ear? I told you. Don't you find it's isn't it terrible like find like I don't know. I I do you have any I hope you don't. Have you guys like grown up or gotten to the age yet where you found out like really fucked up shit about your family? Or like fucked up shit about Dude. I, I mean, some of us have, some of us had like every all of us go through something like this in life. Yeah. Well, you grow up and you're like, oh my God, I never knew that Uncle Pete used to do that with the kids. You know what I mean? Like, that's why we used to keep Pete at his own table. You know, that's why we used to keep Uncle fucking Terry away from the young girls. Huh? We used to literally keep Uncle Terry away from the young girls. I'm not even kidding couple others that are kind of um, a little bit surprising when I read it as well. Um, lemons and limes, they're not native here. That one I actually believe but just because of the whole like scurvy thing. They would always stock lemons and limes on ships because it fights gum disease, scurvy. Oh. Which is why the British were, British sailors were known as limeys. This is getting fucking crazy. This is getting crazy. Yeah, I never knew that. Huh. Well, yeah, that's like some stuff you don't know. And that's why... You learn something new every day. Well, Absolutely. it's like the R word, or the F word, or the N word, or any of the words. The words can change, dude. That's Depending true. on who you're talking to, the word's different. Mm. Mm. Words that are offensive now weren't offensive five years ago and and for instance the r word which i think is a pretty mean word i grew up saying it all the time it's a very new england word mm -hmm. it's terrible it's yep. one of those awful words that we all grew up saying yep. but but they changed it. It, it before it was the r word it was the m word moron yep. which is nasty to say to somebody with disabilities it's mean, okay? Mm. So it was so mean that they changed moron to our word. And we all know that that's not very nice. So now we've changed it from the our word to now they're calling that, look up the new PC word for it. It's crazy. It's called like... Intellectually so, challenged. Yes, it's called like dimensionally delusional or whatever it is. And, and now, of course, kids are on the playground calling each other Dee Dee. Remember when we used to call each other Ri Ri and Mimi and now it's Dee Dee. It's, it's whatever. So what we've learned is, no matter what word we create, people will take that word and weaponize it. it does, somebody's going to be offended by it. 
Yeah. When we take a word and we make it into something else, we say, oh, no, now it means ice cream. Someone's offended by it. We can't make up words anymore without someone being offended by it. Yeah, but being offended doesn't make you right. Well, it also doesn't mean there's no consequence, and it also doesn't mean it's illegal. Right, I was going to say, we do have the First Amendment that protects certain speech. However, hmm. there are restrictions to that. It, so, like, you can't go around saying the N-word because that's such a violent word meant to... Antagonize. Yeah, so, yeah. in the Supreme Court, um, in one of the landmarks... And I bet you that changes depending on where you go. There's the fighting words doctrine. Or if you say something that's so bad that it's, you are, you're clearly saying it to a, not offend, but in, in, uh, invoke a response of a physical nature, you know. But nowadays, that can be, you can interpret that any way you want. You can right. say pumpkin patch. And the argument is today, I heard you're going to fucking kill me. Right. Because, you know, now with slang and the way that everybody talks on the internet... And every LFMAO, and I'm going to boom you, and zoom a zoom, and getting low, and twerking. You don't know what the fuck anybody's saying to you anymore. You're going to fucking beep a boop a scoop a. You don't know what, what, what somebody's coming at you. So naturally, everybody's offended by everything because nobody knows what anything means, and nobody can fucking agree on it. Right. We can't actually agree anymore on what anything actually means. But that's why there's no legal repercussion for it. Yeah, I can see that. Because there's no precedent to... You can't prove, like, oh, that's what he meant by it. That's true. How are you going to prove in a court of law that pumpkin patch means I'm going to punch you in the face, you know? like. Right, he said you pumpkin patch. You have to prove patch. that, yeah. Right, right, right. Right, and that could be Without hard to do. Without reasonable doubt. Yeah. That could be hard to do. Yeah. What else you got? Uh, I also have watermelon is not native here. That's heartbreaking. Watermelon's not native here. It's from Asia. Really? Most of the fruits and vegetables are from Asia. Oh. Or they're from Europe. But most okay. of them are from Asia. Don't say you might offend two you might have offended like a lot of people by saying both of them things. It's where they're from. Look it up. I'm sorry. That's not what they call it anymore. We're one world. Well, that's what they we want America to be. <laughs> right, this is if you look up, like, on Google, like, the foods that aren't native here, there will be a prompt somewhere in the article that states that America is, like, this one place where it's all about the culture of other places. Yeah, the great American So they kind of, like, yeah. stole I just all said, I said cultures. it's the remix. It's the best song that we got. It's the same thing with the food, and it's also going to be the same thing with these animals, like cows. Cows are not from here. They're not? They're from Europe. Same with chickens, pigs, and sheep. They're not native here. Yo, you heard that? They're all brought from Europe. Yo, you heard that, Melissa? Cows Cows are not from America. They're not from America. They were brought over from Europe. So hamburgers aren't even an American thing? Nope. That's crazy. Nope. Wait a minute. Not even milk. Cheese. I'm leaving. (laughs) Wisconsin isn't even really... From here? The cows in Wisconsin are from here. <laughs> no, I like that. Zach, Zach's like, Wisconsin isn't even from here? No, it's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was stolen. <laughs> you, you just made me, yeah, I gotta write this down, Wisconsin. Fish. There's like certain types of fish that aren't from here, like largemouth bass and trout. That was all brought over from Europe. How come all the most Americana things don't seem like they're from here? Because they're not. I mean, to be fair, if you go out fishing in any of the rivers, those fish aren't natural. They're, they're all from Yeah, the, like, there's really? a hatchery in Nashua that, like, oh, the really? game wardens go around and deliver them to the local bodies of water. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm real dumb. Like, 98 Yeah, said per- don't mess with his Wisconsin. I'm, I would never. <laughs> just, I would never mess with Geo. Just ever. saying. Another thing that says hi, Lexi. Okay. <laughs> Another thing that's not native here, which I found was more shocking than the other animals, white-tailed deer. Really? Not from here. That really not from here. I think that that's really strange yeah, because from. if well, if you're in New Those Jersey, brought. from where? From New Jersey. <laughs> from other because countries. when you're in New Jersey, you could easily when you're on the New Jersey Turnpike and you're in you know, like your tour bus or RV, 
you could easily hit a group of like seven or eight of these motherfuckers. Mm. Oh my they god, I so- remember. I've never <laughs> seen so much fucking deer. That All I crazy. could think of was with your dad. That was it's like crazy. bringing your dad out by the side of the highway. And like, he'd, he'd be, be in heaven. Right. I mean, there's nowhere. I mean. Another animal that's pretty crazy that's not from here. Two of them I, is really funny. The red fox and the coyote. They're not from here. So like, who was like, hey, let's bring some coyotes over to. Right? The, Seriously. The new world. Let's see how, how they do. They probably want to make it a little bit more home-like. They probably have coyotes. Well, you know what they didn't think about? (laughs) Ecosystems and shit. They didn't think about stuff we know about today, like bacteria. They fucked up the ecosystems. I was going to say, ecosystems weren't invented back then. No, I know. (laughs) They were made from your... (laughs) Can you look up, just so we know, when we discovered germs? In fact, keep... I think it's 1920. Keep in mind, uh, you know, all these people coming over are Puritans, like, you know... They're very religious. They were the biggest uh, scientific oppressors. I, I'm gonna write, hold on, hold on. I'm going to write that down on something else. Cause... Wow, bro. Okay. So we got this. Let's hear this. I want to get this. The concept of germs as a microscopic living organisms that uh-huh. cause disease has uh-huh. been around for centuries. But... It wasn't until the that, late 19th century that this theory was firmly established. I can't stand people. The development I, of the microscope in the 17th century allowed scientists to observe microorganisms for the first time. I can't, I'm not, I refuse to act out on, on film. You know what I want to do right now. You took that's such a people thing. You motherfuckers. Somebody knew about it and hid it for centuries. Somebody knew about it for fucking hundreds of years. It didn't fucking say anything about it. This is the, the black swan problem. Do you ever hear about this? People don't think that there are black swans. Well, I'm here to fucking tell you, okay, that... There is. All right. They're just rare. Rare. Okay? But not that rare. Meaning, there's enough black swans to fuck you up. Mm -hmm. There's enough black swans to eat and consume your entire body. There's enough black swans. And what I mean by black swans is that black swan is in every category of life, you guys. Mm -hmm. There's a black swan moment for everything. You are a black swan. The likelihood of all the fucking sperm reaching where it needs to be for your conception and for you to make it out alive to be 33, drinking cheap beer and listening to me on a Wednesday night is a fucking miracle. This is the problem with people that don't like their lives is they're missing this black swan moment is you haven't realized yet how rare it is for you to be here. That's why we are all odd. We are all black swans. Mm -hmm. Have you ever looked around? We're not even. None of us are the same shade or the same height. We all don't sound the same. All of our fingerprints are different. None of us are even. With all the stuff around us, it's all called what? It's called matter. Mm -hmm. And it all is supposed to matter. And then all the other stuff is supposed to be space. But in terms of you, you are the collection of matter inside this space. And within this collection, within inside the you, you are identifiably unique, unlike the rest of the matter. That is odd. And you being odd is your black swan moment. The fact that you are odd and you are you is the proof that your life is fucking amazing. And that you are a miracle. And every time you see a black swan is evidence that you're also and everything that's happening at this very moment is a black swan moment. 
and you cannot wait any longer in your life and just think that there is just one kind of swan. You cannot go along anymore and deny that this experience is special if you choose to notice the black swan. But life and nature doesn't care about good or bad or heroes and good guys. It really doesn't. Maybe all these teachings and morals and stuff, maybe all that. Leave it for that. But nature doesn't give a fuck. Nature just makes black swans. With no explanation. With no, it doesn't need a god, it doesn't need aliens, it doesn't need permission. It just makes black swans, whether you like it or not. You have no fucking control about it. And what do we know about nature? It doesn't say the black swan is good. It doesn't say that it's bad. We just know that it is rare. And people choose to acknowledge the black swan or they don't. But it is real, even if it is rare. And because it is rare and real, that is a miracle. So why the fuck do people build their houses next to miracles? Like volcanoes. It's a black swan moment. You know that the fucking volcano's gonna blow. But yet you build your house next to it. And you don't expect to die. You don't expect there to be a black swan moment knowing you're a black swan. Think about this, you guys. Think about what I'm really saying. We pollute and throw trash all over the ground. We suck the oil out of the ground. We hide the diseases for centuries. Knowing there's going to be a pandemic. Knowing there's going to be a black swan moment. We take none of this matters. None of this is special. Everything's even. No, it's odd. Everything matters. And there are things that are even. But if there's even, then there is odd. You are odd. That's why we are all so different than each other. And we can never forget that we are not even and that we are not separated by our differences. Because by being odd is what makes us a miracle in the first place. And you can't go any more. You can't go any more moments in your life from this point, from this podcast, from what I'm saying from here on. You can't go any, any more minutes and moments without realizing every day as much as possible that this is a miracle black swan moment. And whether you are in a band or you're with the woman of your dreams or you're throwing trash on the ground or we're driving around in petroleum-based vehicles or you build your house next to a volcano. Why do we always forget that this is a black swan moment? Seize this shit. Don't play with your life. Live fully and be a black swan. Are, where are swans from? I don't know. Just talking shit. <laughs> I don't know where the fuck I went with that. People don't eat swan on Thanksgiving. Can I tell you another thing? There's nowhere in the fucking Thanksgiving story where they wrestled down a big bird. No, no one ever said, yeah. Swans are native to a variety of habitats around the world, including temperate regions in the Northern Hemisphere, Southern South America, and Australia. Jesus. They are typically found in freshwater habitats such as lakes, ponds, and rivers, but they may also be found in coastal areas. Wow, look at that. They don't mind getting a little salty. And the black swan that you were referring to is native to the southern hemisphere in Australia. Hmm. Makes wow. sense. There's a lot of weird shit from Australia. I was going to say, I think it's going to happen down there. <laughs> I think like 93% of the world's deadliest creatures all come from Australia. We might never get to know music news. Let's do this last one. This is like a holiday special. <laughs> it seems that mostly swans are native to Australia. And they come and migrate to... Until Australia. somebody from Nashua seizes one. Yeah. 
I thought that was interesting that they're like because Percy's from Australia. What do you got, Zach? See, I got I got the opposite of Lexi. I got ten foods that are native. There's stuff that's native here? Yeah, believe it or not. I don't believe it. Let's go. And the first one being squash. What? That's a good one, dude. That's a yep. good one. As one of the three sisters, the three main agricultural crops native to North America, along with beans and corn. Good stuff too, I'm gonna say. What? Right? You know, if it wasn't for but if it wasn't for corn, there might not be a civilized world. There wouldn't be one. We'll talk about that another time. This next one's gonna blow your mind. I actually didn't know this one. What? Avocados. What? Yeah. I thought that was from like the wait islands. A minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like like See, I'm talking North America. Wow, that was what I was gonna say. I'm shocked. Because it's it's native to the, our region of Mexico. The Mayans even used a word I can't pronounce of an avocado to represent the 14th month on their calendar. In modern days, California is now the largest producer of avocados in the country. Should I eat more of that? Do you guys like it? Avocado is so good. You like it? I love avocado. I don't really eat it. Avocado on I look, I look, I know, look, I can see her face. She's, she's, she's look, she's guacamole. like. Guacamole. That's what it is? Well, you can make guacamole. It's from avocado and, like, tomatoes. You That's like, what squish guacamole it all together. is? Yeah, you just squish it all together. I don't like squishy stuff. And then, boom. It is a superfood, yeah. So good. It's a superfood? Yeah. Yeah, it fills you up. It's water-based, too. It fills you up. That's good for you? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I wish I liked stuff that was good for me. I don't like anything that's good for me. You could take the big seed out and plant it. I don't want to do that. I want a pizza. Another superfood is like a kind. Oh, yeah? You know, a kind. I like, like a kind food. of pizza. Right? <laughs> no, I, you know what I mean? I just, I'm not saying like I like, I don't like fast food, but I do like bad food. <laughs> I love bad food. We'll I want bad food. We'll definitely talk food here soon. <laughs> What else is we're, from here? I know. You know what's funny is we end. We're ending this podcast with food, and by the time we turn this shit off, everyone's gonna be dying. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when I bring up this next guest, we have peppers. What? Mm. Yeah. Peppers is from here. That's Indigenous awesome. peoples of Mexico, Central America, and South America spice up their meals thousands of years ago, cultivating. Chili peppers for both medicinal and culinary use. Can, 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 you, can you back up a second? He said thousands of years ago they had pep in their step. <laughs> both hot and sweet are dated back over 10,000. Yeah, 10,000 years ago. 10 fucking thousand? Holy shit. When did the Puritans get here? <laughs> Not too long ago. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so the name chili comes from the another word I can't pronounce, but it's basically an Aztec language. And the name pepper was actually given to the uh, crop after Christopher Columbus thought it tasted like an Asian spice known at that time as peppercorn. So it had a different name before Christopher Columbus came. And it was stolen from another place. Oh, shocker. <laughs> He said it's like something. Oh my That's God. like some influencer shit. Yeah, right? man. What the That's so hell? meme-y. That's like Snoop Dogg and the weed smoking bullshit. <sighs> you see the fucking issue with this? Snoop Dogg and Christopher Columbus are on my bad fucking list this week. Fuck you, Chris. I think I... Oh, this is horrible. So I've mentioned we got, you know, the green avocados... Beans are native to America. Is it but, mar- is it marijuana? But I also got potatoes and tomatoes. What? Good man. Both potatoes and tomatoes are native to the Americas. What? Yeah. Potatoes. Though potatoes are often mistaken as an Irish crop, explorers brought this starchy vegetable back to Europe from their expeditions. The origins of potatoes can be traced back to the Andes region of South America, where Incas cultivated the crop more than 1,800 years ago. More than a 1,000 cultivars 
of potatoes exist today. And over 99% of cultivated varieties originated from Chile. What the heck? Potatoes are my favorite food, man. And they're from here? They're from here. Wow! Now you can, maybe we can plant some Let's outside. Plant some potatoes. And then, of course, tomatoes, often associated with Italian cuisine. Tomatoes actually originated in South and Central America and were domesticated by the indigenous people of Mexico. The Aztecs used tomatoes in their cooking prior to the colonization by the Spanish, who subsequently exported the tomato to Europe. The Aztecs cultivated both green tomatoes, a.k.a. Tomatoes, not important, and red tomatoes, and use them in a variety of sauces. Nice. Wow. Look at that. I feel like I've, we've actually like. And this was a really different episode. I didn't expect it to be like this. <laughs> Every now and then we have a special one that's kind of different from the usual. What the fuck, huh? That was weird. I like how we don't know what's gonna happen, kind of. Right. It's all a mystery. What do you think, Melissa? It's great. Let's did you pre did you predict it? We didn't talk about one bad music industry thing. We don't always talk about. It. Somebody said the other day, you, you know, that we talk so much about stuff we don't like about the the music industry. Maybe we should talk about stuff we do like. I was I like, like working with you guys. I was gonna say, I, hold on. I, I feel like we have a very well balance of things that we don't and do like. I, Absolutely. I, I just think that if you're a certain kind of person, you can latch on to either one. Like, right. if you wanted to, you could rewind me winning that award over and over again. Mm -hmm. But I think that'd make you fucking sick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want to see more positivity. Right. I like watching it. You know, right. You could say, you know what I mean? You could see that me congratulating Rob or me mm -hmm. hugging Melissa throughout the year or me and you working together. People don't like to see people having a good time. No, because while good news travels fast, bad news travels faster. Hmm. I noticed that. You know what I mean? We've got tons of positive stuff. It's just it gets low views. Not that we cover things to get views. I, no. we, I just It's something we understand and know. We can look at it. We can measure it. Mm -hmm. We know when we talk about, you know, Spotify goes and starts kicking people in the ass. And we go, hey, Spotify's kicking people in the ass. People go, hey, we want to learn about that. If I say, you know, Zach's done great, he's lost five pounds, nobody cares. If I say, me and Melissa are doing great, We're, we have a really happy and fun relationship, people are like, I hope you fucking choke. <laughs> wow. No, but that's, no, that's how it is. That, she's laughing. Look how she's laughing. You guys are like, what the fuck? She's laughing because she knows what I'm talking about. You only know that if you've been, if you, hold on, the people that know that have just been in relationships forever. The longer, the longer that you, the longer you have a boyfriend or girlfriend or, or a husband or wife or something like that, oh yeah, people don't like that. Hmm. You're supposed to be upset. Aren't we supposed to, be, aren't we supposed to hate each other and everything? That's what people would like or think. Absolutely. You've never seen that? People can't stand that. Misery loves company. Mm. I mean, if, I mean, honestly, like, if I make a face, and people will say, oh, is everything all right? I mean, are you hoping that I'm, I'm all right, or are you hoping I'm not? Mm. No, we never, we never, like, we never have issues. You know, people say, and people go, oh, you know, I bet you guys never argue. Of course we were like regular people. Regular people always argue, like a regular couple, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We don't argue more than, which would be, which is a weird question or a weird thing to talk about, because that's like, should we be arguing more than others? <laughs> See? It's weird, right? It's weird that people have enough time on their hands to worry about how much you and Melissa argue. They don't. Or why they even ask about it. They don't. Okay. <laughs> I love y'all, man, and I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. Peace out.